Hello, I'm Philip Myers of PEMI Consulting. I chair the API 2000 Task Group on Flow Certification Testing for pressure vacuum valves used on storage tanks. I have just finished analyzing the test data and want to present these results to anyone who is interested in this topic. Before starting, let me describe a scenario that is repeated endlessly to orient you to the issues involved here. Almost every fixed roof tank uses pressure vacuum valves, also referred to as conservation valves, PV valves, or tank venting valves. These are pallet-weighted, gravity, and spring-operated devices used to maintain the internal tank pressure and vacuum within prescribed limits. These devices are important to the safe and proper operation of tanks. In our scenario, a tank engineer breaks out API Standard 2000 to size a PV valve. She determines the required normal and emergency venting requirements. She then contacts a vendor who provides certified flow curves along with a quote to ensure that she is getting a properly sized PV valve or emergency venting device. Unfortunately, you do not always get what you pay for, as we will see. A few years ago, concern was raised about the accuracy of flow curves and manufacturer claims relating to pressure vacuum vent valves widely used on fixed roof tanks. As a result, the API 2000 committee decided to initiate a series of tests of PV venting devices to see if there was indeed a problem. I volunteered to chair this task group because I was a consultant and not a manufacturer and could act as an unbiased custodian of the test data as well as the ability to do the required data analyses. I have made sure that the data is sanitized, that is, while the data is public, the manufacturer of the particular data set is unknown to protect the confidentiality of the study participants. One of the reasons debate arose about the testing accuracy is that the manufacturers are almost evenly split on whether they use the API 2005th edition testing rig and its requirements or those of the 7th edition. While there are lots of opinions about which may be better, the fact is nobody knows which is better. If one test rig is better than the other or even whether or not the test rig makes a difference in the testing results. This is where the need for formal testing and statistical analysis provides the tools needed to understand and make the issues clear. Luckily, early on, it was decided to simplify the testing to see if vendors could get agreement if they tested a flow nozzle, which is nothing more than an orifice through which the test air flows prior to being sent through the valve. You will see a diagram of this a little later. To eliminate variability, a set of three different orifices were machined and sent to each vendor in turn who measured flows using their test rig and the same identical set of orifices, but without the PV valve attached. A total of six vendors participated. Both pressure and vacuum flowing conditions were tested. This testing and the testing results are what this presentation is all about. This slide shows a partial sample of the data collected by one of the vendors that we analyzed. Six vendors participated in testing, but only four vendors submitted complete data, and these were used in the analyses. The results were that large discrepancies that one would think would not exist do in fact exist. The flow rates under identical conditions range from minus 8.7% to 6.2% of the mean, or just about 15% from high to low. These disparities cast doubt on the manufactured flow certification processes and claims related to their PV valve performance. Here you can see the flow nozzle that was tested. It's marked test specimen. We did not test the PV valves. It is nothing more than a machined orifice. There was a mix of 5th edition and 7th edition vendor test rigs due to their normal practice in certifying flow curves. 
Three different nominal nozzle sizes were used, 2 inch, 6 inch, and 10 inch. The test was conducted under both pressure and vacuum flow modes or conditions at five nominal inlet test pressures. The overall test program results are displayed here. There are large discrepancies in the flow rates measured by the vendors on fixed orifices. The flow certification process in API 2000 as it stands may not be credible. Details about the study follow next. This table is the final result of a statistical analysis called an ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. This type of analysis partitions the variation or sums of squares into components that explain factors that cause the variation. The p-value is, like, is the likelihood that the factor under consideration would occur by chance alone, a standard criterion for rejecting the idea that the difference in results is due to chance alone, is to assume that any p-value less than 0.05 is significant for that factor. In this analysis, we used three factors, diameter D, pressure differential P, and vendor V as the main factors that affect the measurement of flow. The D colon V and the P colon V are interactions between factors. As you know, it is possible for factors to interact. Another an informal way of saying this is that the whole effect can be greater than the sum of the parts. As you can see, and as expected, the diameter and pressure factors are significant. But note that vendor is significant, meaning that the vendor measurement error had a big impact on the measured results. We used what we call consensus flow rate, which is the average of the four vendors because we did not have a gold standard to ensure accuracy. In other words, we can determine the relative precision of the four vendors by analyzing how far each one deviates from the average, but without reference standards we cannot determine their accuracy. Of course, if the vendors are significantly different, then at least one of them must be inaccurate. So we are in a position of determining whether the vendors agree with one another within the margin of statistical error, but we cannot say which of them deviates significantly from the true gold standard flow rate. Using gold standards for testing along with a more appropriate testing protocol is a follow-up item if API decides to move forward to correct these flow measurement problems. Note that we analyze the logarithm of the flow for two reasons. First, theoretical flow rate is the product of the orifice area and a complicated expression involving inlet and outlet pressure. Taking the log makes these two terms additive, which assists in complying with a statistical normality assumption of data. Second, flow rates vary by several orders of magnitude. This table shows the deviation of the four vendors from the consensus flow rate and is the basis of our claim that there are significant differences in accuracies of at least some of the vendors in the way that they do flow measurement. This figure shows the total noise less the vendor bias. Total noise has three components. Vendor by diameter bias, vendor by pressure bias, and pure error or residual, which is strictly random variation. The horizontal axis shows nominal orifice diameter as major ticks below the axis and nominal pressure differences as minor ticks above the axis. Solid symbols are noise. The dotted lines are vendor bias. Note how the vendor bias swamps the noise components, meaning that the vendors in their test rig are mostly responsible for the discrepant measurements. Vendor bias stands out above the noise, which is what it means to be statistically significant. If we show just pure error, which is error that cannot be accounted for by the diameter, pressure, or the interactions between vendor and pressure, or vendor and diameter, we are left only with random error. This chart shows the vendor bias and compares it to pure error or noise. Again, 
This demonstrates how the vendor measurements are discrepant well beyond any random noise in the measurement process. We analyzed the vacuum results as well, and the statistical results are similar. That is, the vendor bias swamps all other types of error in measurements. There were some differences, however. First, the diameter vendor interaction was highly significant here, whereas it was not under the pressure mode. This most likely has to do with the measuring apparatus or the way the measurements were made. There was also a systematic type error in the measurement of the 2-inch orifice that also probably has to do with the inability to get good measurements at the small orifice flows. The issues I have presented here have been presented to the Flow Certification Task Group as well as the Chairman of the API 2000 Committee who is discussing the possibility of acquiring ASME's help. It is too early to know what specific plans are to follow. However, it is my recommendation that these issues be pursued because PV valves are considered safety equipment and there are large numbers of these needed by industry. It's important to know that a formal white paper covering the study, the testing, and the statistical analyses, as well as the sanitized data sets, are all published and downloadable from github.com at the following link. I'm a strong believer in transparency and reproducibility in these kinds of studies. The work that I'm publishing and making available will allow future API investigators to continue addressing this problem. The README file on GitHub has instructions on working with these files. All the data as well as the programming code is given, including the white paper. All programming was done in the R statistical language, an open source language. Also important to note is that I am not representing or speaking on or behalf of API. The opinions expressed herein are those solely of myself and PEMI Consulting. I would like to acknowledge George Woodworth of Pemi Consulting who did the statistical analysis, also Andy Wong who provided the work on GitHub, and finally myself for actually pursuing this work, documenting this work, and providing the information for which I had no obligation whatsoever to do. I have helped to implement and document this study in the hopes that future work on this can be more easily implemented in a technically correct manner and that we improve the API process for certifying flow rates for these important devices. Thank you.